scalable big data solutions can be quite a daunting task. Many of our customers today are dealing with increasing volumes of data, more uh, wide variety of data types, and sophisticated analytics. Um, so the complexity really is in the data platform uh, that enables all these different types of services. Say, for example, you're a digital media uh, company. You may be a, a publisher that's providing content over an internet, uh, or you may be um, an ad network or a DSP or a marketing service provider, uh, or even an e-commerce storefront that's providing goods and services via a website or a data platform. The data platform typically can be uh, quite diverse, and it can be quite complex. And let me illustrate that with, a, with, a, with an example. At the core of that data platform usually is a, a real-time uh, decision engine of some sort. The real-time decision engine, uh, usually what it does is it intercepts events and then it reacts to those events, right? Um, and these events can either be uh, human generated or it could be machine generated. Examples of human generated events could be clicks, right? Uh, audience members going and clicking on websites, on links and things of that nature. Uh, it could be impressions, wherein you could be an ad network and you're generating targeted display ads. Uh, it could be tweets that are intercepted by some sort of a service and then it reacts to that in real time. Uh, it could be Facebook likes, things of that nature, where humans are interacting with a service or a, or a website. And then we're also seeing uh, an increase in machine-generated events, right? Um, these could be things like APIs, for example. If you are a real-time billing network, um, then there's a lot of uh, programmatic access to that, uh, to that system. Uh, it could also be location information. We are seeing an increasing number of mobile devices and tablet PCs that are constantly uh, keeping track of your specific location and then providing that information back to back-end servers. So, and, and a real-time decision engine is, is, is reacting to that. So some of the ways that it reacts to events uh, it could be uh, generating personalized content depending on who you are. It could be uh, looking at tweets and then uh, you know looking at the content within that tweet and then generating the right impression or the right type of um, uh, you know display message for you. Uh, if you're a storefront, it could be uh, making a product recommendation. So all those decisions are made in real time. Now behind this real time decision engine usually is some sort of a data processing grid. Right? And what the data processing grid does is it takes these um, events, which are typically persisted in, in some sort of a, a web log file or an ad server um, log file, and then uh, it then ingests that at some fixed frequency. Right? And uh, it ingests that and then it does different types of activities. So in a digital media environment, for example, uh, it would take impression data and then apply uh, IAB filtering rules, or it could do IP value encoding on that data, or it could uh, correlate different types of events, and these are typically stateless events, so it would correlate them based on uh, temporal uh, or fuzzy logic type keys. So it may do all those type of things. Sessionization is another example. So some sort of aggregation, filtering, applying a structure is what's typically done in this uh, data processing grid. And then that data gets delivered to a couple of different subsystems. One of them is an analytics uh, subsystem. And in the analytics subsystem, what you're trying to do is do some sort of optimization. You're running predictive algorithms and predictive analytics, right? Um, so if, say, for example, uh, you're a publisher. Um, you're looking at user activity. And then what you're trying to do is you're trying to identify variables that impact conversion, right? Or uh, if you're an ad network, what you're trying to do is you're looking at all your real-time bids and trying to uh, find out what's the most optimum bid to uh, to win uh, with lowest possible CPMs. Or if you are a premium publisher, you're trying to optimize yield on your uh, on your inventory. Uh, or if you're a storefront, you're trying to improve the recommendation. So you're doing all these type of things. You're very analytical in nature. And typically, there is a feedback loop from the analytics subsystem back into the uh, into the real-time decision engine. The real-time decision engine also has uh, an analytics component, uh, but it's working on a smaller subset of data, so the accuracy is not that good. So what you do is you constantly keep improving that from the analytics subsystem and then providing feedback. Another uh, target point for the data grid is a reporting environment of some sort. And in, from the reporting environment, you are powering uh, your BI, you're powering your uh, exec dashboards, and those type of things. Uh, and, and, and typically in this digital media example, you may want to look at uh, campaign performance, you may want to look at uh, unique visitors on a site, and those type of things. And those are all activities powered by the reporting. Uh, we're also seeing a couple of other uh, extensions to this architecture. Uh, you may have um, a, a real-time 
uh, reporting um, infrastructure that is looking at um, events as they arrive, and then you're making decisions in within subseconds in terms of what needs to be done. Say, for example, you're looking at volume of your events or user activity, and let's say this whole infrastructure is running on a cloud, you're making determination on uh, do you have enough headroom, uh, do you want to dynamically provision more infrastructure, those type of things, things that needs to be decided and acted upon instantaneously. And you also see customers uh, who have set up something called as an analytics sandbox. Um, and what this is, is typically um, there are two types of analytics environments. There's a productionizable analytics environment where you're running um, algorithms and, 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 and data processing at, at fixed frequencies, right? And that's what, and then that feeds back into the real-time engine. But then there's also stuff that you may want to look at, um, you know, in an, on an ad hoc or a need basis. So usually you would have data scientists look at massive uh, amounts of data and try to look for patterns or nuggets of information, and in a process known as uh, exploratory analysis. So as you can see, this uh, whole uh, data processing or data platform need for a digital media industry uh, can be quite complex to architect and it's cumbersome uh, because there are all these different components and they all have different scale criteria. Uh, and, and that's really the challenge uh, in architecting scalable big data platforms today.